Okay, welcome back to my studio. And today we're going to look at something a little bit different. I've got a small canvas primed up with green. And over in the corner here, I have a picture there. I have a picture of an akikari, which is a type of toucan native to Costa Rica. Yeah. So, and what I'd like to do is again have another go at trying to paint a la prima or as close to a la prima as I can get. Over on the palette cam here, I've got a mix of um, water and stand oil and it's quite a reasonable proportion of stand oil in that water and I have got some burnt umber over here which has been left out in the air and is getting a little bit tacky but I can rejuvenate that with, uh, with my medium I'm using a Rosemary & Co ivory flat brush to mix and just block in. So let's see, we have a branch in the corner. That's a fairly sizable branch too. So and it takes up the corner there. And it comes up and it creates a decent triangle to about there. And so I can just gently sketch that angle in. And I can see that my first estimate there was wrong. And the branch is probably here. Let's not forget about the side. Okay, so. Like I say, a fairly substantial branch with lots of lovely epiphytes on it, lots of things growing on top of the branch. And um, these branches are a great habitat in their own right. You can see the branch kind of bulges up there and then it kind of corrects itself a little as it thins out a little bit there. I'll take up some excess here. Just borrow from this space here and apply more paint here. What I'm now learning is um, it is possible to correct as you go. This mix is getting a bit old. So back into my medium, back into my uh, burnt umber mix. And the second layer is sitting more proudly on the surface. Okay, so there's going to be some nice um, plant forms coming down here. Hmm. Which uh, will be a nice addition. Okay, round about halfway. We have a bird. Which looks a little bit like a teardrop. It's fairly leaf shaped itself. So here. And its body tapers down about here. So I've gotten that horribly wrong. Unless I make the bird a little bit more substantial. Which I shall with the next part of the drawing. Um, 
I am learning that if I do my initial drawing in Burnt Umber, that all I need to do is add a little bit of French Ultramarine on top and it becomes a black. So the head and the beak come around in this direction. With the head perhaps slightly more angled in that way. So I'm going to use my towel to remove some material. From here, and from down here. And I can see that the head is very square, but the beak starts here and comes out in this direction. And so if I scrape it in, the beak is very high up on the forehead. So if it comes up about here, quite high up, but doesn't extend that far out from the body. So I'll make a little correction here. And bring the body up that way. So if I do a little bit of drawing with the heel of my pencil, my uh, paintbrush, sorry, I can see that the jaw is square. Do I want to do more work at 2.30 in the morning? No. So my employers contact me through notifications like that. Uh, no, I'd rather paint, to be honest with you. So there's mapping out that area there. So we've got a, an idea for the the beak and the eyeball and the chest area I think is a little bit higher up so I would say that this collar that it wears is lovely dark it's a blue black collar um, the bib is about there and the chest comes down here. Perhaps I've gotten that right. Is that right? And then across to the, the area known as the vent area, where its bottom is. And the wings taper from here, if I just block that in entirely, the wings come from the collar into a beautiful shoulder, tapering back almost flush with the tail there. So that's quite nice. And it's from my drawing and from my reference photo, it's a narrow tail. Does it extend that far down? It doesn't extend beyond the branch, so I should maybe end that there. And that allows the vent area to come across sort of horizontal, taper up under the belly scoot out and then backwards towards the breast area. Okay, and there will be feet here. Possibly in a lower trajectory. Okay, 
so we are fairly good the mapping I think is all right the wings may extend out slightly past the body this area here looks like to be the coverlets for the back those are the tertiary feathers the, here this area and of course if I use this to lift out again I can try and lighten the underside a little bit more back in my paints and establish some values so the collar is or the throat bib is very dark slightly darker on the front of the forehead rounding at an angle like so forming a kind of triangle there there is a dark patch shoulder a triangle shape there the beak comes back level in that direction so perhaps not as angled as I had it coming back quite low into the body like so and then forming this now part of the charm of this bird is it does look like a leftover from the dinosaurs it really has a kind of prehistoric look about it um, which is part of the charm of this bird right, so that comes out at a triangle it forms a straight line in that direction and then immediately doubles back upon itself here now I wonder back into my burnt umber uh, yeah burnt umber was the color that was used for the underpainting uh, in a technique known as the five layer um, portrait technique Um, two layers of umber, two layers of grisai, one layer of umber, two of grisai, and two of um, final colours. So, uh, something like that. I'll get my facts straight when I'm not exhausted. I can concentrate a little bit better. Any mistakes I make in commentary, I'll correct in the dialogue box. So, yeah, this is a very elegant form for such a prehistoric looking uh, creature. So yeah, as I uh, was saying, as I was saying, the burnt umber was used to you know, map out the tonal values before committing to a grisai and then later, which is grays, and then finally Right, moving to the colour layers. So, in this painting we have a leaf form here. Comes back on itself a little and goes 
in here. So maybe I can remove some material. Lift out a little. I'm working on this tile here, um, which is useful as I can wipe off the brush for this kind of lifting out. I will lift out some of the material that's already placed to draw that second leaf and suggest that form. And I think these two sit actually higher up on the branch than I've given them. So if I do that, I can lift the branch to accommodate that. And the little kind of red detailing, which is about there. And what I'm going to look forward to is the um, all the kind of um, leaf shapes that are going to go on the underside here. They're going to be tremendous fun to do. So I'm just going to suggest that there's that many of them just now. Some more should be over here. Um, I do enjoy painting mosses. So if you followed any of my artwork before that's on the um, page, you can find the ones that are uh, the Quetzal, where I had a lot of fun making up uh, a branch and covering it with material with epiphytes and bromeliads, plants that live on top. And, uh, and then <laughs> and covered them all up with some other things. But it was doing that that made me realise how much I actually enjoy painting these um, very full branches. So again, I'm just lifting out with a brush wiping off the excess on this you know, sacrificial towel that I have and making sure that the drawing is as it should be. So to make sure that it's more visible I'm going to go in with a, another layer of my burnt umber and double check that the taper on that tail is correct. And even there just now, yeah, I can see that that is reminiscent of my picture. I can see that round about where the foot, the bird's foot ends there, there is a dip downward which comes back upon itself there, so I'll pop that in. And there's some mossy forms in here. So again, with a little bit of lifting out, I can suggest the texture. I can see that in the background here, there is dark in the greenery, which then surrounds the bird, comes up behind its head in this direction, follows a little bit of darkness round about its breast and chest, here, its underbelly, and this area here is a bit darker. So where I had the mistake is actually working in my favour because that is part of the darkness that is there in the greenery. 
the sense that the branch could be even thicker as a substantial branch and that these plant forms can come down these little leaves leaves forgive me come down this way and for the sake of the buyer if there is one I'll put the branch over on the other side, make sure that it continues round. Okay, so there we have a little umber sketch. And yeah, I can see one more correction. Maybe that comes out a little bit too far. So that's a little bit better. Yeah. That, that V is sharper. And there's a dark there, which is worth preserving. Okay, there I have a shadow background image of the subject, which I think is a collared akari. akakari. Um, I was lucky enough to see them on a trip to Costa Rica. We saw them only briefly and at a distance. Uh, but they are lovely. Do I want to work at 3.30 in the morning? Nope. So get rid of that. <laughs> and there's more um, darkening there, more uh, dark tones in the greenery there. So. A quick sketch which maps out where all the details can go in the next uh, part of the painting. When the camera's not rolling anymore, I may continue to uh, um, tidy up. So, looking at the negative space under the vent area and the tail here, I can see that there's more of a gap there. Looking at the negative space here on the light colour making the V from the belly of the bird to the branch, that actually looks okay. Uh, I have zoomed in in mine in, in the relative proportion of my canvas to the ratio of the uh, photo. But everything so far looks plausible. And that leaf could even be a little bit more, and perhaps even broader. But I think that's fine. Thank you for staying with me for this little uh, sequence on these studio shorts that I'm now producing. Thank you for watching this one. I hope, as usual, that you found something that was of interest to you and that it might inspire you to enjoy creativity wherever you may be. Okay, hope to see you in the next one. Bye now.